Hello and welcome to another video on digital communications systems. We now begin to use some mathematical modeling so that we can predict and quantify the performance of a system. Basically, we want to see how much we can get and how close we are to our desired mark. So we take the channel and the modulator and demodulator and we call that model a discrete memoryless channel. Discrete just means that it goes in steps rather than continuous or analog. Memoryless means it doesn't have any memory or there's no storage capability in it. So what we put in comes back out. Uh, maybe it's corrupted by noise, but what comes out depends only on what goes in, which if you remember your digital is the state when we don't have any flip-flops. It's equivalent of combinational logic. Okay, so we can take our memoryless channel and we can refine it further so that we're going to put binary in and get binary out. And that uh, refinement on the memoryless channel becomes a binary symmetrical channel. Now we call that one symmetrical because the it doesn't prefer ones over zeros or zeros over ones. And there's no preference for either zeros or ones. So therefore the equivalence of getting an error will be the same whether, whether the one comes out as a zero or the zero comes out of a one. That's all you have to understand from that, that... A 1 coming from a 0 and a 0 coming from a 1 has equal probability and so it's referred to as the binary crossover probability. So that's pretty straightforward. Now we have a special way of writing probabilities in mathematics. So we say let the binary crossover probability be alpha. And since the channel is symmetrical, we just write what we had in words in short form. And um, the brown writing there clearly shows that what is on the right side of the line is what we put in. And what is on the left side of the line is what we get out. So all you have to do is remember that what's coming out of it is on the left and what's going in is on the right. So in this here, we're just saying, this is just a mathematical statement of what we said already. Uh, we put a zero in, we get a one out, and that has the same alpha probability as putting a one in and getting a zero out. Now we stop a minute to um, just note the difference between analog channels and discrete or digital channels. In analog channel, we are concerned with the fidelity of the waveform. And uh, the waveform is what is corrupted by the noise. However, in a digital can channel, we really don't care whether the wave is mangled or not, just so long as we can identify a zero from a one. So clearly this is a more robust communication mechanism because all we care about is that crossover probability. It's all about the prob probability of errors in the data. So now we begin to analyze our binary symmetric channel and those are the four possible outcomes. We put in a one, we get a one. We put in a zero, we get a zero or we get the crossover in either direction. Now when we write these probabilities out we say that the probability of a zero or the probability of a 1 must be equal to 1 because 1 is a certainty. So uh, the, the use of the, of the 1 there means that it is certain. What we're really saying is that certainly it either has to be a 0 or it has to be a 1. And we extend that argument now to the method that we used to write in the last... Uh, page. 
So we're saying that if we put in a zero, we're either going to get it coming out as a zero or we're going to get it coming out as a one, but it can't come out as anything else. So therefore, if we put in a zero, the probability of getting a zero and a one out must collectively add to one, means it's certain it can't be anything else. And obviously, the same applies if we have a one. If we put in a one, the only thing we can get out is a zero or a one, so that is a certainty also. And finally, we restate our binary symmetric crossover of probability, and now we have all the mathematical information we need to do this. The Probability of getting a zero when we put in a zero is actually one minus alpha, and the probability of getting a one out when we put a one in is one minus alpha. We have all the information we need now to answer the following question. If we put in zero, one, zero, and we get one, zero, zero out, what is the probability? of that happening. How do we work out the probability of getting a one zero zero out when we put in a zero one zero? Well first we have to look at which have changed. Clearly two of them have changed from a zero to a one and a one to a zero and one of those has not changed. So when we write it down we see that we have two alphas and a 1 minus alpha. And we multiply those together to get the answer 1 minus alpha times alpha squared. Now, we have to remember that alpha is always going to be less than 1 because probabilities are always less than 1. Probabilities lie between 0 could never happen, 1 happens all the time, so the probability of it happening is a number between 0 and 1. So when we have a fractional number like that and we square it, what happens? It gets smaller. So this proves that the probability of getting more than one error is less. So the more errors we have, the less likely it becomes. Happily for us, the increasing number of errors is going to get drastically decreased it's not a linear quantity and you can see this because if you add more digits for more errors you will move to alpha cubed and alpha to the fourth power so that is definitely not decreasing linearly it's increasing de sorry decreasing drastically so it becomes less and less and less likely that we will get more errors and the alpha, which is the probability of getting just one error, is all we really have to look about, look at. That, that number is really the most important thing that we're looking at. And that concludes our lecture today. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.